Tommy Rothrock started out whittling with a pocket knife, and he was good at it. However, when he picked up a chainsaw with a little practice, he soon found that a whole new world of creative whittling took place. Well, the carving started uh, in 1977, going to Branson, Missouri. A guy with us happened to pick up a couple of little blocks of wood and a little old diagram for carving a dog out of basswood and these little old blocks of basswood. And so we brought them home and I got to piddling with that and with a pocket knife. And then that slowly developed into getting an exacto set to do better carving. and. What worked out good was that the fire department at the time, at night, as we had the TV on, uh, guys would be sitting and watching TV, and I'd just take a newspaper and lay it in my lap and just sit there and whittle and carve and do that. And so it developed into doing, oh, I did a banjo man out of black walnut, about a foot tall, and uh, some other items like that. Chainsaw carving came about through my son-in-law, Sam. Uh, when they bought our house that we used to have, we'd heat it with wood, and I'd, I'd heat it with wood for 25 years plus and used a chainsaw for cutting. And he had an old uh, blowdown, I believe it was, and he carved a bear out of it, and he got hooked. And so then a couple of years later, he kept bugging me about getting into it because I'd always played with saws, and I had a big old big saw and a smaller saw for trimming. And so, uh, he kept after me and after me that summer, and we got a couple of pieces of wood, and I started whacking on them and cutting, and I was all summer doing two items. To take and cut firewood just in a straight cut is one thing, but then to hold a saw in different angles and work it different ways, and feather cuts, and, and just kind of sand with it and stuff like that, I couldn't get the grip of it. But once I did, then I got hooked on it. Well, then the next thing I figured out was, my upper body wasn't in shape to run a saw three or four hours at a time with your arms extended because that just totally changed the difference of doing your cutting through wood. So I started doing some upper body work that I used to do at the fire department and uh, get myself in shape where I could carve in the morning or afternoon for several hours. Now I'm just I'm having a, a really a lot of fun now just working with benches and doing that because benches are creative. You can do you can make the post into something, the seat into something, the back into something different. Uh, big items get complicated like a larger Indian and a grizzly. I've got you have to scaffold around them. how long on the bear and I can say I remember an entire afternoon of several hours of just doing the hair because I was literally wore out uh, even with the little carving saw on, on carving all the hair in there but it was it was several days off and on I don't gauge my time because I just if I work a couple hours in the afternoon but there's probably several days into the bear it's about a six and a half to seven foot cedar Indian uh, with a full headdress. And even my wife said, well, why did you do all that? Because it's in a back corner and you can't see it. And I said, well, I want the whole thing to look good, every bit of it. But an Indian is probably to me the ultimate hardest object to carve. 